land of Egypt even unto this day, in that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit thou shalt protest sol- solemnly unto them, and shall show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. So Jehovah God says to, to Samuel when he prays, look, first of all, understand they're rejecting me, not you. Okay, even though they're, they're, they're tossing you out, it's really a rejection of me because the system is set up where I'm the ruler. And when you think about it, Jonathan, that's not a good rejection to put in place, is oh, it? Oh, <laughs> no. That's bad. But God tells Samuel, says, give them their king. He said, but make sure you protest solemnly first. In other words, tell them the downside of what their decision is going to be before you go ahead with it. And Samuel told all the words of Jehovah unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them unto him for his chariots and to be his horsemen. And they shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint them unto him for captains of thousands and captains of fifties. And he will set some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and the instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be perfumers, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men servants, and your maid servants, and your goodliest young men, and your donkeys, and put them to his work. And he will take the tenth of your flocks, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day, Because of your king, whom ye shall have chosen, whom ye shall have chosen you. And Jehovah will not answer you in that day. So Samuel gives them a very detailed rundown of, Okay, you want a king, understand, it's going to cost you. Here are the consequences yeah. of your actions. And it's going to cost you dearly. It's going to cost you some of your land. It's going to cost you your people. It's going to cost you some of your freedoms. On and on and on. He lists it all out. And he says, and you are going to be so frustrated by all this, you're going to cry out to God. But it's going to be too late. So he's giving them fair warning before the decision is actually put in place as to the consequences. So what do they do? But the people refused to hearken unto the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we may also be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of Jehovah. And Jehovah said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city." So even though uh, they were given fair warning as to what was going to happen, detailed fair warning, they said, no, we want to have a king. Anyway. Just like all the other nations. So you know, the phrase, if everybody's doing it, it must not be bad. Yep. Yeah, yep. well, there's there should be a nope in there somewhere, I think, <laughs> because they were warned. It was very clear, but because all the other nations had their kings – Israel wanted their king as well. And it became a very, very difficult thing. So when we look at this, Jonathan, we have a nation making, a a nation going wrong. That's right. What caused them to go wrong? How about peer pressure? Everybody else is doing it. Why can't I? Okay. They saw the examples of everybody else and they knew that they were different, but they saw this example that everybody else, uh, and, 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 so they gave in to that pressure and said even – so they closed their ears. You know, mm-hmm. you know that, that when, when you, you've seen it maybe on a TV show or something when, when somebody's not listening and they're trying not to listen. They stick their fingers in the ears. <laughs> I'm, not la, 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 la. I'm not listening. That's kind of what I think of you know, the nation doing at this point. They just weren't listening. See, the nation wanted what everyone else had rather than what God had in mind for them. Under the circumstances, it may not have seemed like a bad idea because Samuel's sons were corrupt – Samuel was old, so why not make the change now? The issue comes in the fact that they were changing from a godly standard to an earthly standard. Good point. Okay? Change was appropriate in terms of the judges, but not 
scrapping the system. Mm-hmm. So they they wanted what everybody else had. So it was pressure that Israel gave into at this point. And I think that's our first point on where did they go wrong? Pressure makes us make bad decisions. This is Jonathan and Rick with Christian Questions on News Talk 102.3 FM, WXLM. Grab your Bibles. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 